2022 meeting of Mayor and Council. I'd like to call on Pastor Johnny Corbin, North Dallas Church of God, to lead us in prayer and remain standing for the pledge as well. First of all, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to be in this place. We thank you for these that you have put into this particular ministry. Oh, Lord God, as the city council and the mayor, and we ask you to minister to their lives, oh Lord God. Lord, let everything that is done, God, done with their heart and mind towards you, that you might be glorified in everything that is done in this city, in this county, Lord God, for your glory and honor. Thank you for your love and blessings toward us in all of the situations that arise, God. We pray, God, that we would always pray first and allow you to work on our behalf. And we're going to give you praise, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before I move on to the approval of the minutes from our last meeting, I think I've lost count of how many of the Leadership Lounge Youth League are out in our audience right now. They would all stand, please. <laughs> That's almost all that uh, remained. And be sure to tell your classmates they only got one meeting in November. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you for the interest in our community. I have two thoughts to City Council regular meeting from uh, October 6th. You've had time to look over the minutes from that meeting. Council, any, any changes to that? Any additions or deletions? Seeing none, minutes are approved by acclamation. We'll move on to item three. Bids, contracts, agreements, and expenditures. Consideration of bids to purchase a bucket truck, bucket lift truck for the engineering department. Ben O'Dowd, our city engineer, will present. Ben, how are you doing? Doing well. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The traffic division of the engineering department is seeking to replace one of our traffic uh, sign signal maintenance bucket trucks. The truck in question is vehicle number 1748. It's a year 2000 Ford F-350. It has 75,000 miles on it, um, but these trucks run continuously while they're on the job site, so that doesn't truly reflect the wear and tear that's on this vehicle. Um, it is aged, and it is beginning to become a safety concern for my staff, and so we're seeking to replace it. Uh, we've allocated in this year's budget $90,000 for this vehicle, um, and again, what we're facing on all fronts is shortages and long lead times. Uh, we've sought alternatives for this particular vehicle and we're seeing lead times upwards of 18 to 24 months um, for comparable prices. Thankfully, we were able to find a, uh, a vehicle via the Georgia State contract price through Aikens Ford in Winder, Georgia for $162,700. This vehicle is available immediately. They're currently holding it for us. Um, we have the option to purchase this vehicle I would recommend that we purchase this vehicle. And I'm here to answer any questions you have about this vehicle. Council, any questions for Ben? Ben, thank you. Council, cheers for action. Mayor, I make a motion to um, set the bid for $162,700 for the bucket of truck. Sir, I have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Other than ouch? Yeah. All in favor, show of hands. Yeah, listen, thank you, Council. We want the local funding request. I've made consideration of a request to approve the American Rescue Plan Act or funding for the Small Business Grant Program allocation. Christy Moore, Boston Lowndes County Chamber of Commerce, Dwayne Johnson, Black Business Alliance representative will present. Welcome to the meeting and thank you for your hard work in this matter. Thank you. All right, as already spoken, uh, my name is Dwayne Johnson and this is Christy Moore. We're here to report out, thank you, on the Opera Small Business Grant Proposal. Thank you. All right, I'm just going along with the slides you can have, you can see there. Uh, our committee was appointed by the city council a while back, and uh, just to go over our gracious participants of the council, excuse me, of the committee, um, as follows: Nick Harden, Stephen Hedden, Dwayne Johnson, Chris Jones, Christy Moore, Nick Perry, Justin Purvis, 
Rico Ramsey, Katrina Sermons, Miguel Vicente, and Carla Walker. Uh, we wanted to just kind of give you a, a rundown or a repeat of how we got here today. Uh, we started out with uh, the following process. Uh, the committee met twice uh, thus far and created an application for the consumers of the, the grant to be able to submit. Um, the goal here was really to create a fair, accessible, and easy process. And I think very much that we accomplished that uh, with the help of the committee, uh, which was its greatest intent. Uh, we did get uh, to a point where we got the opportunity to send out these lovely postcards to every individual business uh, that is a Boston City business license holder. Uh, applications were finally sent out on the, uh, or went live on the city website on September 7th. Regarding the process, um, we first had a pre-application review period that lasted from September 6th through September 21st. And that gave applicants an opportunity to submit their application for review and feedback at no risk to them. Uh, it's very, very helpful. 157 applicants took advantage of that, which was a great uh, opportunity. Uh, then we held two town hall info sessions where more than 150 attendees got a chance to hear about this process that we're going over today. Uh, those were held on September 13th and September 14th. And then finally the application period for final review and submission was conducted on September 26th through October 17th which just passed. I'll turn it over to Christy. Um, as Dwight mentioned, we really worked through as a committee to make sure that we were making this as fair and accessible as possible across the city of Valdosta. Part of that I will say, y'all know these are ARPA funds, they're coming from the feds. They have their own regulations, but of course we're keeping it legal, don't worry. Um, we made sure that we followed their criteria, so some of this is not that our committee chose this way, but this is kind of the way the federal government dictates in terms of making priorities. So our funding criteria you see on the left side, our tier one was in the qualified census tract, and also they had to be minority women or veteran owned uh, business wise. The tier two was just in the qualified census tract. Tier three would have been minority woman or veteran owned. They're still in the city, just not in the qualified census tract. And then tier four would be everyone else. So that means they're in the city, but they're not qualified census tract, and they're not woman and veteran owned. I know there were a lot of questions about why the qualified census tract. That came from the feds. Yes, we know it is an arbitrary, it feels arbitrary to everyone here. It does not follow you know, the city of Boston guideline. It doesn't follow anything specific, but that's what the feds suggested. And so that is why we followed it. You can see on the right side, I'm sorry that print is a little small. I apologize for that. But you can see the breakdown that we were saying they would qualify. This is gross receipts, and it's important to note that that's receipts, not in or net income. So we allow them to use whatever the best year, 2019, 2020, or 2021, for gross receipts. You can see the breakdown, um, and they did have to show proof of that, of course, to see they were eligible for a maximum grant anywhere from 5,000 to 30,000. Yes. And then we. One thing I'm very proud of with that pre kind of review period that we had so many people apply. And I will say out of those, I think we had one application that was perfect. So I do think that was really important and helped people just take that time and feel a little more reassured through the process. But you can see here's a breakdown of our applications. In total, we received 234 and you can see it Absolutely, the biggest group was the qualified census tract and uh, minority woman and veteran owned business, and that's 108 of those. Also, I just realized that you can see the numbers, it's 77 and 21. They got mixed up on a line. So, we're coming to you tonight on behalf of the committee to ask you to consider giving more than the million dollars that you already gave ARPA for small business. And we understand that as a committee, we really had no idea what the response would be. The only really experience anyone had had to that point was the nonprofits. 
which their application process was very different. This is a reimbursable grant, and we did include a copy of the application um, behind the presentation in case you had questions about it. But this wasn't, you didn't have to tell us what you were gonna do with the money. We wanted it to be as objective as possible. If you met the criteria, great. We didn't want anyone to have to put a value judgment on whether your business is more important than your business. We didn't want that. But you can see, we came up with, if, if everyone was funded at the level that they requested, it would be $4.23 million. In a positive note, that means we got the word out. <laughs> and our business community is very interested in what the city's doing, and they've worked hard. So I do think that's a good way to look at it. And then we've got, and you can see the breakdown. That's option one. We would love to have an extra $3 million. We also recognize that's probably not realistic, but we did want you to see that part. Sure, sure. excellent. Uh, option two actually allows us to fund fully tier one, which is the, as we call it, the first bucket. Um, tier two also would be fully funded under this option as well. Uh, the numbers fall out for those two numbers as two, roughly over $2 million for uh, tier one, and then at $600,000 at tier two. Uh, then at that point, we got a little creative uh, to basically try to lower the, the cost to the city in that case. Uh, tier three would be $2,500 each, and of course, tier four, as you can see, at, uh, excuse me, $1,000. That would be a proposed total of $2.88 million. And an another option, which we can get creative as a committee and come up with other options. We're grateful for any dollar that you give this committee. But another option would be to fully fund tier one, and then the next three tiers break down to tier two, $5,000 each, tier three, the 2,500, and tier four, 1,000 each. One thing we would like y'all to consider is we absolutely could do, you've got a million dollars, it's gonna be eaten up by probably 40 businesses if we do that. The first, they're going to be qualified census tract and minority women that are known. It's going to be 40 people, and that will be it. But if we could approach it with one of these creative approaches, we'll have an ability to still impact the majority of businesses that did apply and were eligible. And I wouldn't presume to know what it's like to sit in your seats, but I do know that y'all really value your business community, particularly those, what's important to note with these is they stayed open throughout the pandemic. They kept their employees, they did the things, they made the hard decisions, and they really kept our community going. So this is a way that we could still impact everyone. It might be a smaller scale, but I work with these businesses all the time and, and they're not gonna turn down any amount of money, That's what I'll tell you. Uh, so that's just something we're happy to answer any questions. We really want to come to you with gratitude for making the business community a priority. We're overwhelmed by the response that we've had. It's been great to work through our committee and hear the different perspectives, but we truly appreciate you all making that a priority for our community. Thank you again for the hard work today. Close yeah. to the microphone, I'll let the council ask a few questions. I just want to make you aware of what's going on next door currently. Um, on Tuesday, we did the first of the minor home repair ARPA meetings. It's a kind of a workshop to tell everybody what, what the application process is. 65 people showed up on, at noon on Tuesday, and that makes that, yeah, 100 applications did go out. Thank you. The, the, about that same amount is showing up over there right now because of this meeting as well. And there were only a lot of 350,000 public, so that's that's going to be an ask as well. Just a few, just just to let you know what we're up against, not what you're up against, what we're up against. Yeah. Council, any questions for you, Dwayne or Christy? Yeah, the uh, the 108, the number there of the QCT and that tier one option are how many of the? I mean. I guess the question is that it says maximum grant amount is 5, 10, 20, 30. So are y'all maxing out every 108? So if there's 20 of them, are they getting 5,000? If there's 30 that meets the gross amount of 50 to 100, they get the 10,000? No, uh, to answer the question, no. Um, the way this, where we are kind of right now is that uh, with the help of the finance department, we've been able to uh, 
understand if everyone who submitted that is eligible at this point, uh, if you were eligible for $5,000, that's what the total is on the following slides that you're referring to. But naturally, there may not be a one-to-one -one ratio of the receipts that match the ask. So that value will likely go down. Does that help answer your question? Yes. And I do think, I will say, you know, the finance department's done an amazing job. Crystal has been great. Y'all should give her a round of applause because she really has been amazing. But I know they're still going through all the receipts. And so that certainly could lower the amount. But we do have a committee meeting on Monday where we kind of agreed on a timeline. We're grateful for our two city council representatives who sit on the committee um, so that we can get this done. The goal was to have checks out by the end of the year. Well, we felt like we had been told we need to make this happen pretty quickly and we did try to make it as quick as possible. But I do think one thing you might be asking, Andy, is whether um, at that fully funded level, that does mean that everyone's receiving whatever their max, if, if their receipts match it. So, yes to that, but we will not be able to fully fund all the levels, no matter what, unless y'all want to give us $4 million. <laughs> Can I say option, uh, what option one was? I think it's option one and three, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You mean there's not one, let's go to option two. That's what I was looking at. Option two, when you say tier one and two, we need to be fully funded, and I think we get something like that, because for that amount, tier one and two, or something like that, Five, ten thousand, something like that. So, what you're saying, if your receipts match that full amount, then they can get it, that full amount for that. Yes. And I will say, the majority of businesses, if they were eligible for ten thousand dollars, they found ten thousand dollars to submit receipts. But there were some that might have submitted eighty-five hundred. So, we're certainly not going to fund more than the receipts that they submitted. That's part of you know a federal requirement is to have that reimbursement side. Uh, but the option two would fund everyone in that qualified census tract. And the federal government assumes that if your business is in the qualified census tract, that you have, you are already at a disadvantage. So one other thing, I heard you say something about, you say that it was a reimbursable grant. Yes, so something that's very different than the nonprofit was you did have to submit receipts for items that you spent money on already. So it could have been anywhere from July 1st of 2020 until basically whenever they submitted. And there were specific areas based on the federal grant. Um, most people used mortgage and utilities. For most businesses, whatever their max was, they had spent enough on space or utilities. Honestly, many of them just on utilities had spent their max in that because the federal government did already have PPP to help with payroll, but there has really not been anything to help specifically the way that this grant is structured. Okay. Got something further questions? Well, I think it's important to make sure everybody understands that what the committee is trying to do is find out what amount of money, if any, the council would allocate in addition to the one million. Once they have that number, whatever that number ends up being, they then can go, okay, here's how much we have to work with, and this is how we feel best it needs to be divided out. Um, obviously with the understanding that, you know, tier one's obviously a, a priority. One, and we'd love to be able to fund tier one and tier two in particular. But um, there is a realization that, you know, that we, we can't allocate that much money uh, towards it. So once they have that title number, they'll follow up Monday and meet, and then they will begin drafting the list and how much each business is going to be eligible for. And they'll bring that back to us at our first meeting next month. We'll have a work session to take a look at it, work session to have a presentation on it. Uh, and then we will have that list to vote on at our November 10th meeting. And right after that, checks can start going out to these small businesses and get them some help. So that, that's where we're at with this. 
You know, I have one other question too, and I guess Mark, when you're about to say something, I'm going to say if we do allocate it, because I remember well on our, our list when we were uh, allocating a certain amount of money and so much for like for the small business and everything like that, because I remember very well I said, is this written in stone, this amount that we would allocate to? Right. And the question came up that it was not. But we had allocated all the funding that we had. So who do I ask? Oh, yeah, the, we are fully allocated our 16.2. But as we discussed before, that's not set in stone. We can reallocate as projects need more, or pro maybe a project's going to be less than we anticipated as well. So we can continue to reallocate to the full 16.2 million dollars is gone. So there, there is room for reallocation to other projects uh, on the list that we have. It was not set so that was just our starting point to get going with. So they were asking for 1,500. Can you just give them a four two? Well, two I mean, one million. Well, here, I, I was, great question. I knew you were going to ask that. So getting too, I thought they needed more. In your agenda package, just for a starting point, since I, I, I just wanted to get to a starting point. Uh, I asked for an additional one. One point one million five hundred fifty thousand dollars. That would fully fund tier uh, uh, one and two. Is is why that was our starting point uh, because that's yeah, that that's the spirit and the intent of the ARPA law. So I thought that would be a good starting point to fully fund the first two buckets, and that's that's about a million five fifty with a little left. Maybe even a little more than that once we finish the whole, uh, get all the, the applications processed. Uh, so that's how I came up with a million five fifty. Any further questions, Council? Well, I think to make sure every member of Council understands that currently where that, if we were to agree to 1.5, that's going to come from the allocation we made for the train project. Um, down here on Griffin Avenue or Savannah Avenue. Well, it's not just that. It's also the fact that we've had several other requests, requests as well, such as the housing that's now come up that we didn't realize we was going to have as many folks to come in and put applications in for. And, I mean, at that amount, I mean... You'll have the food bank back before you do it very soon. Yeah, yeah, food bank back and forth. So, I mean, there's several things that we're going to pull from that, that pot. Right. I mean, I'm fine with giving an additional million dollars. You know, with knowing um, as far as like the other things that we have going on that's coming out. I mean, I mean, all, we don't have, we're limited in that, that pot. That's yes, we are. That's where we're trying to go. I heard you, I know you're saying we're limited, but I, I know I heard something that we have extra money that we could do. I, I did hear. The, uh, but remember, this project doesn't stand alone by itself. There are everything we mentioned in the war coming back at us. So. And we've already helped some of those already, so they're coming back and getting us. Okay. Yeah. But I still think we should allocate to me. So, um, Mark, were you asking for a motion tonight <laughs> on this um, 1.5? Yes. Or what do y'all want to? You got lots of, what do y'all ask? You, you so got now? options to stand pat, or you can come up with a number and move forward with But we don't want to stand pat because that leaves them Correct. in the most. Right. We need to make a, we make, you asking us for a decision tonight? Yes. I think we'd prefer a decision okay. tonight so the committee can get back to the again. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Council, any further discussion or questions for the two? Well, let's, start, let's put it this way. Any further questions for the two people standing? So, what we make a decision for the night is to go ahead on so that they can move on. Any further questions yeah. for the two standing in front of us? I do have a question. If we, uh, if we make a decision tonight on this, then that means you'll go ahead on and move forward with getting, uh, I guess, we're getting ready to allocate the amount to the people. Do you already have? Candidates that you know who's going to have to uh, apply how much money to already? Do you have you you know the applicants? I mean, quite frankly, we'll have we spent like the last hour and a half the day before coming up with this allocation of proposal. So what we'll need to do is based on the number that is given to us, we'll need to come up with how that's allocated based on you know the numbers that we came up today with the intent, as usual, to fully fund tier one, and then how the remaining impacts the rest of the tiers. And also, all of the applications are already submitted, so we certainly will do our best. And one thing I would mention is tier three. I know that that wasn't 
in the QCT, but we're still talking about our minority women veteran-owned businesses. There are many of them that are literally across the street from the QCT that I think we, if we all drove down those roads, would say they're just as disadvantaged as the ones on the other side. They just had luck of the draw. So that's why, as we looked at these numbers, it was important for us to try to do something for those that tier three. So when are you planning on cutting checks? Chat? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> we're hoping to meet on Monday as a committee. We are already planning to meet on Monday to decide whatever allocation y'all decide tonight. We'll talk through the different scenarios that the committee could decide. We would then have to bring it back before city council with the final numbers where that wouldn't change the number. That would just get your final approval just like you had to get final approval for the nonprofit. You'd actually have to list a lot on that thing, right? Yes. yes, so that would be end of November. We'd come to you at the beginning of November, so I would imagine checks would be kept by the end of November. That week? Well. You have busy staff. I'm not going to put that pressure on them. <laughs> All right, any further questions for the two presenters? Thank you both very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I'll mix up there too. Thank you guys for the hard work in this committee. All right, then, Council, it's your direction. May I like to make a motion that we you take this city manager's request for 1.5 people? I have a motion. Failure to second. I'll entertain a second. Another motion. Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> I really wanted to second Eric's motion. <laughs> it's still not bad. I wanted to second that motion. But um, in all fairness, I know the rehab project's going to need some additional funding. Uh, a lot of folks out there that you know, have leaky roofs and falling down porches, et cetera. And that I don't, I don't want to be greedy, uh, but I am a member of the Small Business Soccer Committee, and I would have loved to have said, let's give them four million dollars. But um, but in knowing that we need to have some money available for other projects and, and to play fair with those projects, I'd like to make a motion for one million dollars in additional funding. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Any further discussion? No? Okay. All in favor, show of hands. Two in favor. You do this, aren't you? All in opposition. Tie-breaking vote to me, and the motion passes. Thank you. Good luck with the money. I was hoping for five of you here tonight. All right, I have five citizens to be heard. Of course, at the uh, meeting, we ask you to come forward, state your name and address, so that we can have it for the record. Our policy requires you stay under three minutes. So that others have time to be heard. Please direct all comments to council as a whole and do not attempt to engage individual members of council in debate. It is the council's policy to immediately follow up with you and your concern. Additionally, we ask that any groups that want to address the council designate one spokesperson to represent the group again to ensure that all have time to be heard. And having said that, do we have any citizens to be heard here tonight? Good evening. Good evening. I'm John Robinson, 3327 Sanjuan Circle of Lake Park. I presented the council with a letter that I feel is necessary to be presented here. And I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs because I don't really have the time for the three minutes to elaborate on what I need to talk about. Why does the black community experience loneliness of being exiled due to the lack of economic justice? The arm of economic prosperity has never stretched to the black community. Therefore, we as a community are asking you as mayor and council to ask the advocate of the United States federal government for helping and correcting decades of injustices. We are asking for funds to restore to revive lines that are the south side. This letter is written for straight talk. Now, uh, I'm not going to get into everything on this letter, 
But this letter is based upon your own findings from your analysis of impediments. The problems that have existed in this city for quite some time, and no one seems to act as if they want to really address them. From your own analysis of impediments, it says, the date of the table shows the moderate income classes of income with the highest number of households for whites were 60,000 to 124,999 dollars income class and 20% of whites were income in this range. Most frequently reported the income of African American households are less than $10,000 to $19,000 range and 40% of African Americans is in this range. The problem, this seems to be part of the major problem. And then it reads in the next paragraph, it says that 46,602 dollars for white households, where 23,452 dollars for the African American households virtually cut in half. Our children are murdering each other on the street because of the problem being in the city because the lack of economic equality. We have a tremendous problem here, and this problem needs to be dealt with, and you as a collaborative body is the one that make the decisions to make this happen. I know what I say is here. Sometimes it may not take me very seriously, but I want to explain something. I was the lead plaintiff in a civil litigation that lasted 12 long years. Manuel Noriega was in the basement during the trial. I had Dennis Gersi and Scarola, the owner of the island of Malta, as my attorney. I had... Mr. Roberts, we'll follow up with you afterward. Uh, All right, thanks. Thank you very much. That's the problem, people. Are there any other citizens to be heard at this time? Good evening. My name is Gracie Bacon. I live on 708 Holly Drive down Austin. And this is Donna Head and she lives on Holly Drive too. We um, have a problem. We still got the junkyard. It's worse than ever. But we have another problem and I don't know how you all want to address this problem. We have a man at 701 Holly Drive. He's written, he's not written the whole house. He's written rooms in the house. He has signs outside, it's not something I'm making up. There are signs outside advertising that you can rent a room just like you could at Holiday Inn and in this house. This is a residential area. This is a family oriented community. This is not, you can rent a motel in, uh, on Holly Drive. But he has put up the signs if you drive by Holly Drive today, they're out there. 701, you don't have to get off of Lee Street. He's got the old side rooms for rent. He's got all that junk right out there. So I'm not making that up, it's there. Also, um, Holly Drive has become a speed trap. You know, everybody just race through and going over to the next room. We have a lot of children on that street and people are going through there, going 80 and 90 miles an hour. We need some speed bumps on that street, you know, because what we've allowed to happen, one person come in and do illegal stuff, you're inviting a crowd in. You all let it go. So the man now says he's doing it down the street. Let's go ahead and make us a, a room in the house. So this man is renting a house, um, written rooms. He's not renting a whole house, he's written rooms. He can't keep tenants, they leave in two or three months. But now he decided to rent rooms. I don't know about you, but I, I don't think we should be renting rooms in a residential neighborhood for families. If he's going to rent anything, rent the whole house. But that's not what he's doing. And he, it's not cheap what he's doing. So he's going to make a lot of money. And I just want to know if Van Officer City is going to get some of that taxes since he's running a rooming house on Holly Drive. And what, why do they have to follow codes? She's got a daycare. We got a 
personal care home on that street, they had to follow the codes for the city and the state. Why doesn't he have to follow any codes? Why aren't you all down there saying, where your fire things? Where are your handicap ramps? Where's your light? Where's your electrical system? But you all are not down there. This man is right there facing Leak Street. You don't have to turn on Holly Drive. He's got it right there in your faces. So I know you've seen it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Baker. Are there any other citizens to be heard? And I know I'm not about Austin native, but I moved down here um, in 2009 because my high school, we always used to come down and get beat by violence. So one thing they tell you in orientation is um, we want you to stay in Valdosta. We want you to start a family, start a business. We don't want you to go back home. We want you to stay in Valdosta. And I have a cleaning company based out of Atlanta, and I also do taxes down here. But the issue is, is that, um, and also so you can know, from 2009 up until now, I've lived in Valdosta about, moved back and forth about three times. So I actually decided in August 2020, during the pandemic, like I want to stay down here in Valdosta for my business. But the thing is, is that there's not a lot of resources for small business owners. Um, the main issue that I'm having, because I do taxes. So, you know, when you do taxes, it's different, you know, in Atlanta. And I completely get it. I want to be down here for a reason. But the people who own the commercial properties, they do not upkeep the properties. They're not priced at a fair value. They want you, they tell you all these things. We'll have the property ready in three weeks. Then you finally call them. It's three months. Um, then they want you to do all these other repairs and it's like okay as a small business owner That's not fair and the thing well I'm not gonna say it's not fair, but it's just like How am I really supposed to grow and the thing is is that I, I'm friends with other councilmen congressmen in Atlanta They've invited me to come to their districts. I have one that's like I'll help you for three years You get what I'm saying and just move your whole entire tax business. He knows I'm here in Boston He's like move your whole business to my district and I'll give you whatever it is that you need, the resources, you need a decent space, you need help paying for the business license. He's like, I'll pay for all of that, just move to my district. And it's like, I don't want to move there. You get what I'm saying? I don't wanna leave his, I don't wanna leave Valdosta, but at this point, it's kinda like, probably another two years, if I can't find something reasonable, I'm gonna be forced to move to his district because I, I don't get any, help or there's no one enforcing the people who own all these commercial properties to upkeep their property and one thing like since I do do taxes you know there's a whole strip of empty buildings and technically y'all could be making money I, I watch the, the city council meetings and it's like the city is losing money they can't find money and it's like if y'all would enforce these people to do something to their properties you could get someone like me in um, you know, to do like to basically pay taxes to help with the Georgia State Patrol pension, um, to help with just other things. So that's just all I want to say. Like, there's not a lot of resources for small business owners. Right. It's very difficult. Thank you. Robert. Thank you. Are there any other citizens wish to be heard? The Georgia House from Ryan Five Six Zero Four Oak Plaza, Boston, Georgia. I want to thank you all for serving the people. Um, people come up here tonight and they bring their issues before the elected officials. Uh, I really didn't have nothing to say tonight, but I had two people that tell me, or they asked me, Ryan, why don't you bring up about the water fountain at Martin Luther King? I said, I did that two years ago. <laughs> and there's no water, the water fountain still don't work. And uh, our young lady here, she been up here before talking about her issue. And uh, I just want you all to think about something. Valdosta is in the limelight. Um, the Valdosta Daily Time may not, or the, or the TV stations and radio may not publish what is taken from the audience during citizen participation and put in the paper. I've been going to probably 20 some cities and what citizens say, is citizen to be heard, 
There's not one state I've been to where they don't put it in the paper. So at least the citizens know what their fellow citizens are saying. If that has nothing to do with you all, it may have something to do with our freedom of the press. So I just throwing that out. Uh, a lot of my videos is reaching worldwide. I don't go out to recruit news media to come interview me, but they are doing it. And I have to tell them the truth. Uh, about three months ago, there's a movie coming out. They interviewed me for two and a half, three hours, and I spoke the truth. Not so much about that, Boston, because they want to know about equipment and equipment 10 plus two. But you may not think so, but a lot of eyes is on Valdosta. Uh, Valdosta is a growing city. So I'm just saying, let us listen to the complaints and the recommendations of the citizens. I've been talking about the flag on the courthouse for nine years and to fly in honor of our veterans. It's still not flying. And there's a lot of other places. I go across the state of Georgia doing what I do. And I only know of two counties Two that does not fly a Georgia State flag over the courthouse in honor of the military personnel. If the governor called and activate the National Guard Armory, that's the flag they'll be under. But they won't be under it over here, nor acting some kind. But you go to any other, and there's other places in Valdosta. So personally, I have my own opinion why I think it's not flying and haven't flown in nine years because they did change the old Confederate flag. And there's a great possibility some people say, well, I'm never gonna fly. But y'all have a nice day. As I said, <clears throat> the eyes of this nation is focused on, focus on Valdosta. And they're gonna interview people here, and I want the citizens to tell the truth, and I hope it will shine a light on all of us that we can be proud. Thank you, Mayor Thank you. Are there any other citizens wishing to be heard at this time? Seeing none, I'll close out that portion and turn it over to uh, our city manager for city manager comments. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind everybody of our festive fall celebration. That's Thursday, October 27th at our beautiful Unity Park from 5.30 to 8.30. Uh, we've got a lot of great fun planned for families um, uh, at Unity Park. So I invite everybody to come out and participate and have fun with the city of Alaska, uh, which is not out downtown. It's also Alaska, it's also downtown on October 27th so we'll have some several things happening downtown as we it seems to be happening that way more frequently these days trying to get folks downtown had a successful uh, collaborative effort uh, with Lounge County or the scrap tire event uh, of our thousand tires were brought in and so that you know less and less on the street and on, on abandoned properties that the young lady was speaking earlier about so trying to make a difference there as well uh, but also a man a public partition, uh, the public participation plan is now available on the main page of the city website, so you can take a look at that. Uh, we've had, uh, the mayor's mentioned this, we've had, uh, after 5.30 today, we've had two successful town hall meetings for our minor rehab uh, repair project. We had a great turnout uh, earlier in the week, and I'm not capping how many was over there tonight. Probably about 50. 50, so we've had about 150 folks show up for this, so a great turnout for that and I think that's going to be again as we've talked about earlier during the agenda part of the meeting we're more than likely going to as a body be asking for a little allocation uh, for that project as well it's very popular uh, pub total for Main Street is October 28th through 5 to 9 this is again where you dress your pet up come downtown have fun I think there's some contests and things of that nature um, uh, the police and fire department had a great neighborhood uh, walk uh, this week, they walked in the University Knox Drive area uh, and now part of town, and they had a, a great success with that. And just want to remind the fall of that electronic recycling event will be Saturday, November 19th from 8 to noon at our City Public Works Department. And I think I'll end my comments with that, Mayor. Fantastic, Mark. Thank you very much. There is a lot going on tomorrow morning um, at 8 a.m. The United Way's Day of Caring is going to also descend on Unity Park just across the street. There'll be about 140 volunteers there tomorrow morning that will go out to about a dozen of the uh, umbrella agencies that fall into the United Way um, and go ahead and help with the uh, minor repair with uh, landscaping and paint. And, uh, some are going out to the second harvest food bank to sort food and some are going over to the uh, Boys and Girls Club to help out over there as well. So any other council comments on it? Yeah, Mayor, I just want to um, thank Dwayne and Christy and the committee for um, 
more work they put into this opera, doing all the applications. I know it's got to be hard uh, to get all that together and figure out how the best way to do that. Um, I echo like Tim said, I wish we could fully fund it, but with five or four or five of the things that's going to be coming at us, you know, we are limited on, on, on what we can do, but um, I definitely glad we at least was able to give y'all a million dollars, you know, more to, to, to help out that little bit more. Um, and thank you council members as well for serving on that. Yes, I would like to say something too. Uh, to the small businesses here in Valdosta, you are of the backbone really of Valdosta. And some of us did try to get a little bit more help for you, but I do want to realize that there was some, and you, I know you heard, there's no concern about the other entities. There are other funding as well to help the other entities that they are talking about as well. We were trying to get it. We were here, y'all were here talking, trying to get money and get support for the small businesses. And that's what we were supposed to be trying to talk and help about. These other entities, when they come up, or when they start to come up with them, we'll take care of that situation. And I want you to see, and I'm just here to say, because I, I think it's a tragedy that they are so concerned about others rather than our small businesses who are trying to survive, who are trying to stay alive, who are trying to do things. And yes, and I can I just want y'all to know whether they whether they know it or not, some of the names that I heard them say tonight, they didn't have the hard times doing COVID like some of our small businesses, but they got that big concern for them. Our small businesses are the backbone. Our small businesses are trying to survive. Our small businesses are trying to stay here, and they will be here. These other companies and these other ones, that's fine, that's good. I'm not taking from them, but I don't think anybody should take from our small businesses we're trying to help them. I'm a council person for the city of Valdosta. I want our people to thrive. I want us to have businesses. I want people to be here. I hear this young lady saying somebody else wants her to come somewhere else because of what we are not providing. I'm a spokesperson for the citizens of Valdosta and the small businesses, and I just want to say I will still continue to fight for you, to try to help you get something to keep you here in Valdosta. And that's what I want to say. Any other council comments at this time? Yeah, I'd like to say something. I'm not, I'm not going to be put on the pedestal that I, like I don't, I'm not for small businesses. You know, I, I run a nonprofit organization myself, and when it came time to put in for the funding, I didn't even put in for it. I asked my board not to so we could take the money to allocate it to other people. It's not the fact I'm not for small business, and for you to say that um, to act like us council members have no concern for small business is really to me concerning especially when the fact that what we're doing is trying to make sure that we don't over allocate our money so we can help out second harvest so what you're saying is the second harvest is not important you know what you're saying is, is that helping out these other homes and houses is not important so i'm not getting into discussion but i'm not going to sit quietly while you know you, you play as if I'm completely against small business. And that's not the case at all. I'm just trying to be right by the money that we have to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do to help everybody in the city. I'm gonna come in on it. I'm gonna come in on it. I'm not saying that you don't have a concern. I where is your biggest concern? They came up here for the small business. They've been talking about the other. And since you mentioned Second Harvest, let me tell you. I know about second hops, I deal with them a lot. I have a small non-profit organization as well. I did not ask for the money. When we talk about helping second harvest, I can tell you right now, I'm not taking anything from them. I support them. I wrote letters for them. I still help them get the funding, the allocations. I know that they can get a lot of other funding for as well. So it's not that I'm trying to take from them. No. They help a lot of people here in the, in the, in, in the city as well. But what I was saying, these people from the small businesses came up here. And at this point, this is who we should be concerned and focused on. I did not say you did not have a concern with them. I felt like you just had a maybe higher concern for someone else. And not the small business who came up here tonight. Thank you. Council, any other comments? 
put before you a motion to adjourn into executive Sorry. session. I got it. Sir. Motion and a second for personnel and for legal matters. <laughs> legal matters and personnel. Motion? Motion. Second. Sir. All in favor, show of hands. Council, thank you. Everybody, thank you for your attendance tonight. You should allow us. Thank you.